And today we're going to take on the operating system religious wars, Mac versus Windows. If you have friends who tell you that you must get a Mac, and another friend who says with equal force and conviction, you must get Windows, and you're not sure exactly which one of them to listen to, this video is for you. We're going to start with a little bit of myth busting because the biggest thing that goes wrong with this conversation is starting with the assumption that PC and Mac are in competition. They're not. PC and Mac are operating systems that exist on a spectrum from really, really simple and easy, like your mobile phone, Android and iOS, to really complex, like Unix and mainframe computers. And in the middle, right next to each other, are Windows and Macs. The Mac we hear is easier. In reality, what you're used to is easier. Switching from Windows to Mac is just as hard as switching from Mac to Windows. The Mac is more secure. Yes, of course, Macs can get viruses. The first virus in the wild targeted Macs in the 1980s, and there has never been a time since then when there weren't viruses out there that impact Macs. There are two things that cause Macs to get infected less often, creating that kind of false sense of invulnerability. The first is what we call security by obscurity. Macs make up less than 10% of the PCs in use, and PCs are far outnumbered by mobile devices. So when you're writing code, with the goal of infecting as many people as possible and raking in as much profit as you can, they're frankly not worth the time you'd spend coding for them. Malware that targets Apple users is actually more commonly targeted at iOS, the operating system that runs iPhones and iPads, since there's so many more of them. The other part of that, and this one's a little more flattering, is that Mac is innately harder to infect. It does this by limiting some of the things that users can do. Think of it like a car that lets you fill a gas tank, but doesn't let you pop the hood. It's much harder for you to hurt yourself or break the car, and that's actually okay for most drivers. Windows lets you under the hood, but the more screws you turn and things you touch, the greater the likelihood that you're gonna have car trouble down the road. Just like the operating system, security exists on a spectrum with really secure on one end and really flexible and open on the other. The same limitations that protect you from yourself protect you from bad guys. They also protect you from good guys. If you compare common apps like Microsoft Office products, you'll find that quite a few helpful features are missing from the Mac versions. That's not because Microsoft hates you. Those functions rely on being able to automate some actions that Mac won't let them touch. Overall, it's a reasonable trade-off. Most home users especially can live without some of the bells and whistles if it keeps them safer from things they don't understand. Mac aficionados will tell you that this is an artificial barrier. Since Mac OS can be jailbroken, they call it, and the functions can be made accessible. The thing that you need to understand about that is that when you break open the locks, they're unlocked. <laughs> if you know how to keep your devices safe and secure without Apple's help, have at it. If you don't, Ripping out all the deadbolts and trusting that the house won't get robbed is kind of a dicey proposition. Be sure you understand the cost of that convenience before you move forward. Now, that same trade-off brings us to a big reason why your techs at work may complain about your Mac. Even many techs who are Mac users at home may feel different about it in an office space. Windows is designed to be what we call manageable. Your network administrator can automate lots of maintenance, security, update, and geeky stuff, and send it out to every Windows machine on your network at the same time, or choose specific groups to affect with the command. Mac, not so much. Microsoft licenses Windows to others, who make it available on a much broader array of hardware in far more numerous combinations, and they leave it open enough that developers can do a lot more stuff, which means more interactions, more complexity, points of failure, and when something goes wrong, more players. If your program isn't working correctly, you have to first determine whether it's an operating system problem, a software problem, an issue with rendering the application visually that might be a video card or driver problem. And each of these things is manufactured and supported by a different company. That ability to get under the hood and to do lots of things without necessarily understanding the consequences means that a huge majority of Windows users' complaints are self-inflicted. Apple doesn't make better computers. Indeed, hardware is pretty much universal at this point. Rather, Apple chooses a specific set of options and limits their universe to just those options, making it much less complex 
and reducing the number of possible interactions to a more manageable level. Even if you purchase the same mid to high quality hardware for your Windows machine, it's impossible for it to be as predictable and therefore as reliable in a less constrained environment. This means Apple has the luxury of being able to really understand how every piece of hardware interacts in its products. And just as the functionality is more predictable or reliable, so are the errors. When something does go wrong, Apple is the single point of contact for most of it. Apple does provide better service. This isn't so much a function of Apple somehow being the one big corporation that truly cares, but kudos to their marketing team for creating that aura, as it's a function of the differences in how the two companies operate. What this boils down to is that neither is inherently better than the other. Like buying a car, it's really more a matter of which one's best for you. Who are you? Where do you need to go? Why are you going there? Are you married? Single? Do you have kids and pets to haul around? Do you need to move furniture and groceries? Do you just need to get good gas mileage and commute a long way? All those things are going to change the answer to the question. So here are the things to ask about yourself when you're deciding between Mac and Windows. First, what's your ecosphere? If you have an iPad, an iPhone, an Apple Watch, an Apple TV, Mac's going to integrate with those really seamlessly. If you have an Android phone, a Fitbit, and a Fire Stick, and a Chromecast, and an Xbox, or a PlayStation, you may find that Windows is more able to get along with your varied devices. What do your resources look like? Do you need to spend less? A Mac might be out of reach. Windows might be your better option. Do you need specific programs? If so, are they available for both platforms? If not, are you prepared to learn Bootcamp or a similar tool and become proficient in both Mac and Windows? Or would you be better learning just the one environment where the software you need exists? Third, and this may not apply to everyone, but if it applies to you, it's important to know. Of the two, Windows is a lot farther ahead in accessibility. Both have built-in voice controls, but Windows goes a little farther. For example, unlike Siri, Cortana can log off and shut down your machine for you. Even the initial setup for Windows can be completed by voice without having to use a keyboard or mouse. While Mac is starting to catch up in terms of biometrics, Windows Hello is still a little farther ahead in terms of face and fingerprint recognition. If accessibility is a concern for you, these are features you might want to check out and make sure you understand what the possibilities are before you commit your dollars. And finally, ask yourself what you really want to be responsible for. Like a car, your computer is a complex and expensive investment. Just like a car, in order to invest well, you have an obligation to learn some things about it. Rules of the road, basic maintenance. You don't have to know how to change the oil, but you certainly have to understand how to tell when it must be changed. Now, lots of folks already consider that too much to ask when it comes to a computer. If you're one of them, get a Mac. Pick the device that will demand the least of you and do the most possible to prevent you from hurting yourself or it. If you want under the hood, are willing to learn to change your own oil and tires, and are willing to demand more of yourself in order to get more options, more software, and more flexibility, Windows might be for you. For most home users, a Mac or even just an iPad is enough to do all the things they want to do and offers them the fewest opportunities to break their device. For business users, that question's a little more complicated because it isn't just about you. It's about your company, which may have to repurchase software it already owns in order to get a license that can be used on your new computer. Your IT team, who may have to work harder or jump through hoops to support your device if it's different from the majority. The next person in your job, who will inherit your device when you get promoted. And the person across the hall who has to collaborate with you. Choosing what's best for you may result in a lot of effort, expense, and inconvenience for other people. So if you're making the decision as part of a larger team, the most sustainable solution is to check in with your IT staff and ask them what's best in your environment and start from there. In the end, the answer to the question, which one's better, PC or Mac, is which one's better for you? I'm Nixie, and this has been Nixie Knows. Thanks for spending time with me today. If you learned something useful, please click like so that YouTube will be more likely to show someone else that's something useful too. If you know exactly who needs to see it, click share. Make sure they get a chance to come spend a few minutes with me too.